Welcome to My Life, Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson, a journey into the deepest teachings of Torah and their application to our personal, emotional, and psychological lives. A good tevoch, a good week. We continue our journey in the life-changing Sefer HaTanya. This program is made possible by Rena Lights, LLC, and it is an honor and memory of Rav Yesuf Halevi Weinberg, Olav HaShalom, Rav Moshe Pinchas HaKoyen Katz, Olav HaShalom, and Rav Yael HaKoyen Khan, Olav HaShalom. It is also in schus and merit of Rav Zev Yecheskel HaKoyen and Risha Katz, Le'erich Yom and Veshanim Tevis, for many long, healthy years. <clears throat> We're in the middle of Perek Yud Beis, chapter 12, the chapter about the Benini. Chapter 10 was about the Tzaddik. Chapter 11 was about the Rosha. Chapter 12 begins the Benini, because this is Sefer Shal Benini, the central character, the central archetype and personality that we aspire to be. This will be just the beginning. Chapter 11 and on, chapter 12 and chapter 13 and on will be all about the Benini. And truth is all the continuing chapters. So it's all coming together now after establishing the difference between the divine soul and the animal soul. The faculties of the divine soul, the faculties of the animal soul, the garments of the divine soul, the garments of the animal soul. Now they come colliding. As we learned in chapter 9, the battle between the two kings. Who will conquer the city? So the tzaddik, the divine soul, conquers it completely with a distinction between the extent of transforming the enemy, the animal soul, the difference tzaddik gomer, The Russia, the, the they're both, we can't say equal, but both are impacting the human being in thought, speech, and action. Sometimes the divine soul, sometimes the animal soul. And the Benini, the, the garments are completely in control by, controlled by the divine soul. But the faculties remain intact by the, uh, of the animal soul. Except during davening, when davening has additional strength that keeps it tamed or keeps it at bay or dormant. Those faculties of the animal soul. But after davening, like he explained, then it comes back in full force. However, the Baini, what he has going for him is that he has a divine soul, and the divine soul that rests in the mind has the power of natural power of Moyach Shalat Alalev. So when he exercises that power of, my, of self-control, the mind, which, which is divine soul, the Chochmah, the wisdom of the divine soul dominates over the sikhlus, the, f- the folly, the foolishness of the animal soul which resides in the heart like the natural dominance of light over darkness, as we discussed at length in the previous classes. Nevertheless, he's not called a tzaddik, he's still called a benini. Even though he has such type of tremendous self-control to the point, as we learned, that in that situation, Baisa Shah says if he never did an Aveda, never will do one. But the faculties, the divine, the animal faculty, and the faculties of the animal soul are alive and kicking. Because this Yisra, this advantage and superiority of the divine soul over the darkness and foolishness of the Klippa, which it dispels naturally and automatically, now. It's only regarding the three garments. But not But not that the core power of the divine soul is controlling the core power of the animal soul. In other words, the two kings are both active in the city. The only thing, one king is reigning and control, but there's another one that has a voice. And that voice is speaking to the Benini. Kim Husabat Musha shall never shabam is going over what we learned. Shema Klippish Abachalasmid Le Nitcha Klaumim came up a Benini Achalat Fila. It was not pushed aside 
It was not put aside. It was not um, rejected. It was not displaced at all after davening. During davening, it's as if it's displaced. It's still not like it is by a tzaddik, because a tzaddik has completely eliminated the animal soul. By a baini, with the etzim mahus of the animal soul, is so to speak asleep, as he's going to say later, dormant. But after davening, since it wasn't, didn't disappear, it wasn't annihilated, and it wasn't transformed, so that's why after davening, it affects the person. However, Moyach Shalta Love doesn't allow it to affect the three garments. Now, what happens after davening? He's coming back. We learned this last week, but it's good to, to review. That the fiery flaming love for God is, is, uh, is, is not this is, is no longer awakened in his heart. When it comes to davening, the Eisrots, the Mechen, the Godless, that special auspicious time of davening awakens the divine soul's faculties and its flaming fire to the point that it affects the person. So it's much more than just as it is after davening. But after davening, his fiery flaming love is no longer awakened in his heart in the right chamber. So think of it that during the avening, the, the keiches, the faculties are passionate and alive. It's still not like a tzaddik, as I said, but it's alive and kicking in that way. And that's why it's not called a tzaddik at all. So what is happening after davening? There is still a divine soul. And the divine soul has divine faculties. So the Alter Rebbe adds, Ki im ratsuf ava misuteres. He's now adding another element, which really was referred to back in chapter 9. It says, Techi So it's not bizgalus libe b'chole That's when it's a flaming fire and you feel the passion, not just of the control over the thought, speech, and action, but the faculties are alive and kicking. Now, after prayer, the rest of the day, Techi Rotsuf. Rotsuf is a word like paved, when you pave something, when you when you uh, say, when you cover up something with like a, with a gold plate. But also it's from the word ritzpah, like, like a floor, like the, the essential floor. The word is like inlaid inside with love. So in chapter 9, just to go back there, he said, Rasuf mole v'godush. So Ratsuf is by saying the heart is paved, so-called, uh, it's the, the outer dimension of the heart is paved with love. And what kind of love? Ava misuteris, in contrast to Ava gluya. Hidden love, dormant love, and innate love, she ava hantivis shebenefesh alikis. As will be explained later, chapters 18, 19, and 44. In Pedic Tess, he added Rotsov, then he said Mole, because Rotsov means it's only like paved, it's only the outer dimension, it's plated. Mole means the whole thing is full, the whole heart is filled with love. And Godush is spilling over from the right side of the heart to the left side of the heart and transforming the animal soul as well. Like we know with a tzaddik, it's complete. Here he's only saying Ratsuf because he's talking the minimal. And what is it, Ratsuf? After davening. During davening, the heart gets filled with love because that's what davening does. So it's more than just Ratsuf. And it's not just Ava Musuteris. It's not just concealed and dormant. It's revealed. But after davening, there's yet another thing. So in addition to a Nefesh Alekis and Nefesh Abamis that the Benni has, the Nefesh Alikish also has a constant Ava Mesoteris. Think of it like the love of a parent to a child. It's there even when you don't feel passion. It's there. It's part of our innate love. Then there are times when it's expressed. So during Davini, it's expressed and passionate. You feel it revealed. And it's not just lots of it's filled. 
not just inlay. Whereas during the avening, it's filled and the passion is there. But then there's still another thing the Bainini has. Even when it's concealed and it has effect, it, it has effect, a, effect on him. But Raya, the proof is, because that love, combine it with Meir Shalat Alev, controls the thought, speech, and action. But how much the faculties are engaged, so after davening, the divine soul and the animal soul both have their say, the Moyach Shalat the self-control, doesn't allow the divine, the animal soul, to act in thought, speech, and action. During davening, it's more than that, because you also have the Ava Gluya, what he called Kirish Eish. The fiery, the fiery and passionate fire. And therefore, since after davening, it's only paved, and it's only the hidden law of So when that intense love subsides after davening, it becomes possible for the foolishness or the stupidity, the nonsense of the fool, which is the evil of the animal soul, to be expressed in the left chamber of the heart. So going back to the example, two kings, two thinking kings are fighting over the city. The divine soul during davening is completely in control. Even though there is a dissenting voice, but the voice has been silenced. But after davening, the voice starts speaking again and starts speaking what it wants. Why is that the case? Because the, the passionate love that was there during davening when the divine soul was in full strength has now been subsided. So the, divine, the animal soul is speaking. So basically, think of it this way. If the heart is passionate with something that's beautiful, God, it can't be passionate with something else. We discussed earlier from Cheves Alavavis, you can't have a love to two things, two opposites at the same time. So when the fiery passion is there, it's a fiery passion to the divine during davening. But afterwards, there's still love. You still have the love, but the love is now subsided. It's quiet. So it's in there. It's a Ratsu Fava. There is, there's the, the, it's covered, it's, the Ratsu Fava, as we said before, the expression, that it's like the paved, it's like laid, it's uh, plated with love, but the love is not revealed and passionate, so now there's room for the passion of the animal soul to emerge. That's why he says the words, that now it's possible to happen, before this godless libe by davening is controlled by that divine soul. Now that the divine soul's love is concealed and besuteris, hidden, and only ratsuf, that's when it becomes possible for this, for this godless libe, the love of the animal soul, to be expressed in the left chamber of his heart. And what does that mean? To desire the temptations of everything in this physical world. Bein beheter, whether it's permitted, or God forbid, prohibited. As if he didn't daven. I, a little earlier, the, the king that dominated was the divine soul's passion. Yes, but that has subsided. So it's as we not didn't pray at all. Later, we're going to learn, a few lines later, that the prayer does may help the Mayak Shalat Alev controlled the thought, speech, and action. But now it's Kilalay Spal Klal. The Tzaddik, both during, dav- even d- during davening, for sure is completely dominated by the divine soul. But even afterwards, the animal soul is no longer active. There's no room for any, t- for any, fi- any, any revealed love for the Elam Hazah, as we learned. The question is to the extent of how much it's been transformed. But by the day, it comes back. So then why doesn't it affect him in thought, speech, and action? Because it's the Moyak Shalat Alev, as we're going to learn now in detail. Going back. So it's a back and forth. First he explained that Benini only controls the garments, but, and not the, the faculties. And the garments in a way that he never does in a sin, he doesn't speak or think 
Not Machshav B'Dibur Mais. However, the faculties are still not affected, especially after davening. Now, and that's why a person can still have temptation in the Bainani. However, let's now continue on. Ella, however, nevertheless, Shabbat Isur, just say Dvar Heter and Dvar Isur, the case of something that is forbidden and prohibited. Even though the faculty of the animal soul, of the animal, the faculties of the animal soul are active and speaking, but it doesn't cross his mind, doesn't even arise in his mind to actually violate the prohibition. It's a taiva. Sometimes we have a taiva for something. But you're not, you're not even thinking that you're ever going to do something like that. It's like, please, let's talk on a positive side. You can sometimes dream and imagine being a billionaire. But, you know, practically speaking, it doesn't seem like a reality. So here, too, you can dream. There can be a temptation that seduces. But it's not ill, but it does not cross his mind to actually violate the prohibition. God forbid. So then what, talk, so what in fact, does it have? So that's the idea of thought. Rather, they're like thoughts of sin, which are worse than sinning itself, says the Gemara in Yuma. 29a, Choftes Aleph. We're talking now Hirhure, not Machshove. Machshove is deliberate thinking. Hirhure is inadvertent thoughts. Person, you know, daydreaming. A person's inadvertent thought. That he can't control because the animal soul is alive. So there is a dissenting voice. So it can't affect him that he should even consider doing it or acting on it in any way. But the thought itself comes, the inadvertent thought. And in some ways, that's what the Gemara says, it's koshim avel. Why does the Alter ever bring that? Because he wants to say it's a serious effect. But it's not an effect in action. It's an effect when you say somebody's consumed with something. Sometimes you're consumed with something. Obsessed. You're not going to act on it. But the obsession can eat you up. As a matter of fact, acting on it, even though from a point of view of the harshness, acting, of course, is the main Aveda. The thought is not as, never as severe. But as far as the Gavra goes, the person, the obsession with it is very, very powerful. And that, Yechelem Lifel, those Yehudi Aveim, Yechelem Lifel, Lalis Lemoiche, or Leval Bule Meteirev Aveda. These thoughts can cross his mind, leading to a distraction, Bilbul, distraction from Teirev Mitzvahs. So you see here, he wants to put both sides of the coin. On one hand, to say, by Bainan, he doesn't affect thought, speech, and action, and deliberate thought. As we'll soon learn, he pushes away this inadvertent thought. So that it doesn't do, but on the other hand, the Bainan still has an animal soul that's active. And the animal soul is causing him to have the thought, the inadvertent thought. Like Razal say, Kamaimer Abbasenu Zichrenim Levrocha, Kamaimer Razal, Gimel Averis Ein Adam Nitzel Mehem Bechol Yem. As our sages, our blessed memory taught, each day there are, there are three sins from which man cannot save himself. What are they? Hirura Veda, thoughts of sin. Not concentrating during prayer. And then he says a third thing, which the Alter Rebbe just says, Chulu. He doesn't bring the third thing, which is Ovik Loshen Hara, the dust of the evil tongue, of speaking badly about someone. But he brings the first two. This is from the Gemara in Baba Basra, Kuf, Samach, Dalar Ahmed Beis. That's 164b. Okay. So you see, why can't it be nitzel mechol yem? Why can't a person stop that? Because that's an inadvertent, inadvertent thought. Ain't no dem nitzel man. That means it's not in our control. 
by a tzaddik where he eliminated, annihilated, and transformed his animal soul. That's not possible. I, it says, Einodom, clearly he's not talking about a tzaddik based on the Tanya's Pirush of a tzaddik. But by a Baini, Einodom Nitzelman. That's Midas Kolodom. Every person is a Baini. He can't stop himself from an inadvertent thought. And in that way, and, and in that sense, it's Koshim Aveda because it consumes the person. It means there's a force like that there. There's a voice. So why doesn't it affect the person? Like he's going to say it, actually, Zem Moel, Harishima B'meichin. Rather, for this purpose, this helps. The Rishimu, the trace, or the residual effects, B'meichin, in the brain, that was achieved by Davani. Remember, Meichin the Gavas, the concentration and the emotional stimulation had effect on the person. So even though after Davani he says like he didn't Davani at all, it didn't, it's like as if he didn't Davani, that's regarding the voice, the inadvertent thought. However, its impact on the person, the thought, speech, and action in deliberate thought, speech, and action, it's not going to have because there's a Rishimu that remains. And he continues, Shazem Mel Arashima Bemechin, Vijiris Hashem Vavavose, Hamusuteras Bechal Ayimoni, and the reverence of God and love of God, which remains hidden in the right chamber of the heart. Like we said before, that even though after, that during davening it's alive and fiery passion, but afterwards it's there, but it's hidden, but it's there. So think of it this way, just to give Chaz Roshon, a person didn't daven, so he doesn't have that experience. Remember, a real davening awakens the mind and the emotions and the heart of the, of the divine soul, and you have the experience. So even though thoughts of the animal soul can come back to you after inadvertent thoughts, after davening, but the experience of davening is not, doesn't disappear. When he says, like, it doesn't mean like, like you didn't daven, period. The effect on the animal soul is as if you didn't daven. But the experience that you had lingers and remains with the person. And what effect does it have? That it has the effect that when he feels a desire, a passion, a raza misave, taive, that desires some pleasure in this world, this effect, this uh, residual effect and trace, that he will be, his lishl, his gabra, he'll be strong and triumph and overpower over this ra misave, taive, over the evil, shaloyliyas le shlitim amshala be'ir, preventing it from gaining control, gaining control. The voice is there, but to gain control over the city, the small city, which is the body. From bringing the desire to fruition. Because remember, it's only an inadvertent thought. To influence the limbs of his body. So it doesn't allow those sinful thoughts to become a reality of thinking actually that you're actually going to do it. Furthermore, and this residual effect, so even the moyach itself, even in the mind alone to have bad thoughts, we're not talking about action and speech. That for sure not. It doesn't have any power and control. Doesn't have the control nor dominance to overcome the willpower of his brain to make him contemplate such thoughts, God forbid. (laughs) 
And what does that mean? Didn't we just say that Hirud is there? So he says that's inadvertent. What does it mean that he doesn't have control, the animal soul, to, to deliberately think about it? That it stops him from willingly embracing the bad thought that arises from the heart to from his heart to the brain, as mentioned above. Now what? In Perek Tess, that just like the blood rushes from the heart to the mind and, and nourishes it, so the impulsive emotions could also go to the mind and affect it. That's what happens by a Russia. By a Bainani, the, the, there's a temptation in the heart, and it wants to rise up, the in, inadvertent temptation, like he said, that involuntary, the, the inadvertent thought, but for it to become a deliberate thought, that does not happen. El miyad baliyose l'sham. Because as soon as that thought goes from the impulsive heart to the mind, he dismisses it with two hands. It's an expression with two hands, meaning not just pushing it away with one hand. It's vigilant, vigorous. And as soon as he realizes it's a bad thought, remember, Ain't no dem nitzel man, so he didn't have control over that. But as soon as he realizes, he, he averts his mind from it. Masir daite, that means he pushes it away. As we learned earlier, he thinks about something else, or pafrat, something of Gdusha. The ain't makabel berotzen, he refuses to willingly embrace this negative thought. Afil laharar be berotzen. Not just whether you're going to act on it, even thinking. Deliberately about it. Also not. Hiru, that's not deliberate, that he doesn't have control over. Not even to fantasize it about it deliberately. And certainly not to consider actually doing it, God forbid. Or even to speak, talk about it or speak about it. Because if he does it willingly, we said before, a willing thought, then he's not called a, then, then he's called Russia Basisha. At that moment he's called a Russia. And a Baini, we said clearly, he's not a Russia even one moment, one hour of his life. Meaning his state of mind, his qualitative state is such that he's not he doesn't have that at all. So it could only be inadvertent, not willing. So you see here how the davening helped the residue to feed the moyach shalta lev to control even thought, deliberate thought, and for sure speech and action. So we'll stop here. Everyone have a good tavach. TanyaApply.com is the place to find this and all previous programs and also ask any question. Be well. This has been My Life Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson. Please join us again next week. Visit chasidasapply.com for archived classes and more resources.